everyone. Welcome. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit. Reading today is our brother Mike from Wild Olive Trees. And the title of our precept today, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. First, if you don't have God in your corner watching your back with a hedge about you, it doesn't matter what you get anyway. Because it's either going to be fleeting or it's going to be your reward here on earth. And then you're going to be in trouble when you get to the, the spiritual world, the afterlife, so to speak. Anything that you could possibly have without God is futile. It's not going to last, and if it does, it's not going to be worth it. You're only going to be looking over your shoulder, trying to hang on to it. You're always going to be afraid to lose it. You're going to be setting up treasures on earth instead of in heaven. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he's going to add all things unto you, and he's going to give you all the things you need, the things that are good for you. Amen. And he's going to enable you to build your empire and to sow your treasures in heaven and enjoy the things that you've acquired on earth. Because you're going to do it with understanding, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm -hmm. And when you seek the kingdom of God first and he sets that hedge about you, nobody else can come and tear it down. So let's see what it means when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're going to start this off in 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter. 1 Chronicles 16... 1 Chronicles 16, got a little wind going today, so bear with us up here. And we're going to pick this up in verse 7. 1 Chronicles 16 and 7. Brother Mike, whenever you're ready to start off this precept, brother, feel free to start. Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him... Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Uh -huh. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. And we're supposed to be seeking him yes. continually. And we'll break this down as we go ahead and go along. Go ahead, brother. Twelve. Remember his marvelous works that he has done his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. And we're supposed to ever be mindful of his covenant, seeking him con constantly, yes. continually, ever mindful of his covenant. Go ahead, brother. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. To the Jew first, it starts with Israel. Go ahead, brother. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are, all in, are in all the earth. Yes, sir. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Be ye mindful always of his covenant as you're seeking him continually, because he's never going to differ or vary from it. Yes, he's a God that does not change. Go ahead, brother. 16. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and has confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Yes, sir. Saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. And the physical always comes before the spiritual, giving Israel the land of Jerusalem, so at the appointed time we could all go to the kingdom of our Messiah, Christ Jesus. Sir, yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. 19. When ye were but a few, even a few, and strangers in it, uh -huh. and when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, yes, sir. he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. He suffered no man to do them wrong, he reproved kings for their sake. He had a hedge about them because of their obedience. Go ahead, brother. Saying, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Yes, sir. Constantly seeking God, seeking God, ever mindful, always thinking about his covenant. Yes, sir. Always praying and meditating on it. Let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew 6. Let's see how we seek the kingdom of God. Matthew 6. And we're going to pick it up at verse 24. 
Matthew 6 and verse 24. Go ahead, brother. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. You cannot serve God and man-made gods. Or gods that you create yourself, whether they be money, fame, wealth, whatever it might be. Go ahead and continue, brother. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the body, for what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Yes, we have to think about what we're going to wear and what we're going to eat and drink and all this. But he's saying, don't put all your stock into that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 26. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Yes, sir. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? None of us. Go ahead, brother. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Don't get caught up with all that vanity on how you look all the time and what you're wearing. It's got to be the Gucci or it's got to be the Levi or the top of the line. Don't be thinking like that. Go ahead, brother. 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Even Solomon with all the top of the line threads and garments that they created for him was not adorned just like the flowers, the lilies of the field that God took care of. Go ahead, brother. 30. Wherefore, if God so clothes the breadth of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Uh -huh. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what where all shall we be clothed? Uh -huh. For... All, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need of all these things. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So don't go ahead and put all your stock in all these material things. Because God knows you know, he knows you need these material things. Yes, sir. He knows you got to have clothes in today's society. He knows you have to eat in order to live. He knows you have to have water to drink. He created you. And his only purpose for you is that you come and be like him and be with him one day. So he's going to give you all the things you need to do this. Yes, sir. But you can't put all your stock in these material things. The first thing you need to do is seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he's going to add all these things unto you. He's going to make sure you have what you need to eat, what you need to wear, what you need to drink, a good place to live. He's going to place his hedge about you and take care of you. That's why so many of us flounder for so long before we come to God. We can't figure out why everything's falling down around us. How come our life is so miserable? Why we turn to alcohol or drugs or power or sex or whatever it was. We created gods above the creator. But when we come to Him, He knows exactly what we need to sustain ourselves. And if we seek His kingdom first and His righteousness, then He's going to make sure we have everything we need to live. Go ahead, brother. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And we do it one day at a time, sisters and brothers. Of course, we already know we don't look back. That's a death sentence. But we don't look forward either. Because we have today. And the evil in this day is enough to keep us sober and vigilant. We'll plan for tomorrow, for next week, God willing. But we stay sober and vigilant in the moment, serving God one day at a time. Let's continue. Skip to verse 11, brother. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Let's go to Psalm, the 86th chapter. Psalm, the 86th chapter. Psalm 86. Psalm 86. And brother, one verse, verse 3. 86 and verse 3. Go ahead. 
Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. One day at a time. I don't cry to you weekly and monthly and yearly. Yes, I do, but I do it daily. One day at a time. Let's go to Psalm 68. Back it up a couple of Psalms. Psalm the 68th chapter. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Psalm 68. And one verse, brother, verse 19. 68 and verse 19. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Salih. And this is why we serve Him daily. One day at a time. Because He loads our benefits daily. The last thing we do before we go to sleep at night, however you do it, on your knees, face to the temple, in a chair, however you do it, you make peace with God. You come to Him in the name of Jesus and you ask for forgiveness when you look back at your day and you see where you've fallen short. And if He wakes you up the next morning, He's loading your benefits daily, sisters and brothers. So we seek Him daily, one day at a time. Because the evil in a day is sufficient thereof. The evil that's around us in a day is enough to keep us sober and vigilant. Go to 1 Peter, the 5th chapter. 1 Peter, the 5th chapter. 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Let's see where it all starts. 1 Peter 5 and verse 1. 5 and 1, brother. Go ahead. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Yes, sir. Feed the flock of God which is among you, take it, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but, but of a ready mind. So now Paul's talking to the elders. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, Peter, Peter's talking to the elders. And he says, I also am an elder. Let me talk to you elders about something. And he's going to lay down a line with them. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Now, I want you to feed the flock, but I don't want you to be lords over the flock. You're not anything. You're not some kind of master over them. I want you to feed them, but I want you to be examples on how you're teaching them to walk. Go ahead. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. And when Jesus returns, you'll get your reward. Go ahead, brother. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. But listen, while the elders are serving you younger people in the Word and the congregation, I want you to submit yourself to the elders because they're submitting themselves to you. Go ahead, brother. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. So you're all subject one to another or you're all accountable to each other that you're walking in the gospel of Christ Jesus and you're clothed with humility. Because the walk with the Lord and the seeking of God starts with humility, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Yes, sir. Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And that due time is when he sees fit. Yes. But for most of us, it's at his return. Go ahead, brother. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And we're casting all our care upon him because we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Go ahead, brother. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yes, sir. Whom resisted steadfast in the faith. So you're going to resist Satan steadfast in the faith, which is belief in what? In Jesus, which is what? The word that he brought. 66 books. Yes. You're resisting steadfast in this word. Go ahead. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And not only today, but we can read about the entire history of mankind right here that they had the same afflictions we got. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you, making you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Yes, sir. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The grace of God, though, that has called all of us to eternal life. After we suffered a while, the Father's going to make things right. 
He'll settle us and establish us and put us at peace. And that happens with every tribulation and every affliction for a saint when you stand fast and stand in the gap and endure. Yes, Resist those temptations. Let's continue. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Don't want to get off base here. Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11, precept upon precept, but we don't want to get into another precept. We want to stay on track. Deuteronomy 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18, brother. 11 and 18. We're constantly seeking, but then we're doing something else. 11 and 18, go ahead. Therefore shall ye lay up these, my words, in your heart and in your soul. And we do that today by reading the book, yes. by reading the Bible, the gospel of Christ Jesus. Go ahead. And bind them for a sign upon your hand, that ye may be as frontlets between your eyes. Yes, sir. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Yes, sir. So you're not only going to be seeking constantly, but then you're going to be teaching those about you. If you're in a family, you're going to be sharing it with them. If you're the head of house, you're going to be teaching your wife how to walk. You're going to be teaching your children how to walk. Both of you together, edifying the family. Let's continue. Let's go to Numbers, the 15th chapter. Numbers, the 15th chapter. Numbers 15, Numbers 15, and brother, we're going to pick this up at verse 37. 15 and verse 37. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they may make them fringes and borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So at this time, the Lord commanded Israel to make fringes. We're not over here looking at whether it's still good today and all that. We're just going to read what the book says. The Lord commanded the nation of Israel to make fringes on their garments. Go ahead, brother. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye may seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a whoring. And these fringes, when you look at them, are going to remind you to keep the commandments of God and to seek not after your own heart. Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, but not after your own heart. Go ahead, brother. 40 that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. That you may remember and do all the commandments and be holy unto God. We're not going to seek him according to how we feel. Go ahead, brother. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So we're not going to seek God according to how we feel. We're not going to do it according to our emotions. We're not going to do it this other way. Let's go to Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, Proverbs, the third chapter. And brother, we're going to read one verse, verse 5. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We're not going to do it according to our emotions and we're not going to seek God according to our own understanding. We're not going to do that. We're not going to add or take away from his word. We're going to prove him in his book, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We'll get to that. Let's go to the 16th chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Proverbs 16 and 9. This is what we're going to do. Go ahead, brother. A man's heart devises his way. So our heart devises the way. In other words, the desire is there. Go ahead. But the Lord directs the steps. So we're not going to lean on our own understanding or our emotions. We're going to let the Lord direct our paths as we're seeking him. Yes, Let's go to 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. 1 Chronicles 28. Back to 1 Chronicles, this time the 28th chapter. 1 Chronicles 28, and brother, we're going to pick this up and read one verse, verse 9. 28 and verse 9. Go ahead. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Uh -huh. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, 
and understandeth all imaginations of the thought. Yes, sir. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So we're not going to do it according to our emotions or our feelings. We're not going to do it according to our understanding. We're going to let the Lord direct us, and then we're going to seek him with everything that we've got. Let's go to Proverbs, the 8th chapter. Proverbs, the 8th chapter. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. And one verse, brother, verse 17. Proverbs 8 and verse 17. Go ahead. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And we're going to seek him early. In other words, we're going to seek him now so that we can find him. Seeking him early means as soon as you start getting the inkling that you need to come to him, you feel that drawing, you don't wait. You start seeking him now because there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to find the true word of God. He says there's going to be a famine in the land, but not of bread and water, but of the word of God. And sisters and brothers, that time is not far off. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. And brother, one verse, verse 13. 29 and 13, brother, go ahead. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. And when you seek God and you put aside your emotions and your own understanding and you let him lead and guide you with his word and you seek him with all your heart, you're going to find him. He's going to reveal the truth to you. He's going to put a little bit in front of you. Here you go, brother Paul. Let's see what you do with this. The Sabbath day is Saturday, not Sunday. I started keeping the Sabbath day, gathering with a class on Saturday. It wasn't even a class, it was a group of people. We started gathering on Saturday, which led me to a Hebrew Israelite class where I started keeping the Sabbath, where a year and a half later I got a lesson on how to properly keep the Sabbath. He didn't just throw a whole bunch of stuff on me, say, well, the Sabbath is Saturday, this is how you keep it, now go do it from here on out. It's a process, sisters and brothers. But it starts with humility, which means you're coming to him and you want to know what he wants you to do. And then when he starts revealing it to you, you respond or you repent. You turn from the way you're doing it and start doing it the way he says to you in his word. Let's continue. Let's go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Yes, sir. Genesis, the sixth chapter. Let's see why we shouldn't trust in our own hearts. What's wrong with trusting in our own hearts? If after all, God created them, that must be good. Let's see why. Genesis 6 and 1 verse, brother, verse 5. 6 and 5. Go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Because every imagination of the thoughts of our heart is only evil continually. That's why we got to lead and guard the heart. we got to kick that wickedness out. I say it every time I talk about the heart. If I took a mic every Sabbath and passed it around and said, all right, share the crazy stuff you guys thought about all week long, all the stuff that was abominable and everything, nobody would say, oh, let me share. You'd all be like, oh, man, no, I'm not going there. Because everybody's got wickedness in our heart. That's the human nature. Every thought of our heart is only evil and wicked continually. That's why we can't lean on our own understanding or our emotions. And we have to let the Lord lead and guide us with his word. Right. If we truly love God and want to be with him one time. Amen. Or at the appointed time. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. 22nd chapter of Proverbs. One verse, brother, verse 15. 22 and 15, brother, go ahead. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And it starts when you're a child. No matter if you're born and raised in the true uncut word of God or not, foolishness starts when you're a child. That's why the Lord shows parents in his word how to correct them, how to correct them quickly. He says, you're not going to kill a child. Don't spare that rod. Get out of them when they're being foolish so they don't grow up to not lead and guard the heart because if they don't learn to lead and guard the heart, every thought 
that comes out of it when they become adults is evil and wicked continually, and then society is going to take care and do the things you should have done with your children as you were raising them. Raising them according to the uncut word of God. Let's continue. Jeremiah the 17th chapter. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And we're going to start this off in verse 9. 17 in verse 9. Go ahead, brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And you're going to use your own heart to tell you how to serve an infinitely powerful God that's already given you instructions on how to do it. Just doesn't make sense, sisters and brothers. This is why we don't lean on our own understanding. Go ahead, brother. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. To give every man according to his ways on whether or not they have been obedient to the word that he's given mankind. Let's go to the 21st chapter of Proverbs. 21st chapter of Proverbs. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. And verse 2, brother. 21 and verse 2. Go ahead, brother. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord is the one that knows your heart, sisters and brothers. And because he knows our hearts, this is what he tells us to do. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. It always starts to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. And let's pick it up, brother, at verse 30. 18 and 30. Go ahead. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. To the Jew first. Blessings and all this. And then to the Jew first. Tribulation and wrath. And also to the Gentile. And also to the Gentile. Because it's the commonwealth of Israel that's going to be saved and no one else. Go ahead and continue, brother. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. So because God knows our heart, he tells us to repent and turn away from our iniquities. Go ahead. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye, shall, ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For why will you die, O commonwealth of Israel? Yes, sir. Because we're under the new covenant now, yes, and the sir. new covenant is the commonwealth of Israel. Yes, sir. So repent. God says, I know your hearts. Repent. Why will you die, O commonwealth of Israel? Go ahead, brother. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, say the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Turn yourselves and live ye. Man. At the appointed time with your Messiah and with your Heavenly Father. Let's continue, brother. Let's go and uh, let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew, the seventh chapter. The Lord says, Seek and you will find. Yes, sir. Let's look at this a little bit. Then we're going to get into exactly how we do it. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Matthew 7 and verse 7. Go ahead. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. So here we are now. We want to seek the Lord. We got that desire. Lord, we want you. So we're going to start seeking. Go ahead, brother. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So if you start seeking when you knock, he's going to let you in. Let's go to Luke, the 11th chapter. Uh, yes, sir, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Read verse 8. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Because every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So the Lord knows. He tells us to repent. And if you're seeking him, when you knock, he's going to let you in. Yes, now let's go to Luke, the 11th chapter. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Luke 11. Luke the 11th chapter, Luke 11, and now let's pick it up at verse 9. 
Luke 11 and verse 9. Go ahead, brother. I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. So now he's telling us, Ask, and you'll receive it. Go ahead, brother. For everyone that asks, receive it. Yes, sir. And he that seeketh, find yes, it. sir. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So when you're seeking, you're knocking, and it's going to open and let you in, and you're asking, and you're going to receive what you're asking for. And when you're seeking, what you're asking for is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that you yes. can be with him one day. Yes. Sir. Let's continue. Amen. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Amen. Let's look at the tools we use now to seek God. The tools we use to seek God, because we're going to seek Him now. We know we need to. we got to seek Him first in His kingdom and His righteousness. We need to know how to do this. So we're going to be brief, but we're going to be in-depth and detailed at the same time. 6 and verse 18. This is part of the whole armor of God, sisters and brothers. This is how we combat the wiles of Satan daily. And this is part of that armor. 6 and 18. Go ahead. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying always. Always. That is our biggest defense outside of obedience is prayer. We know how to walk, we stay obedient, and then our defense is prayer. Our obedience is a shield. The prayer is like the sword. Because when we're praying to the Lord, He's the one that's fighting our battles for us. The obedience is what keeps the hedge about us. So those darts can't hit us. So the obedience is your shield and the prayer is your sword, sisters and brothers. Let's go to Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans 12. Romans 12. And brother, we're going to read one verse. Verse 12. 12 and 12. Go ahead. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And we're going to stay instant, continually, instantly in prayer. So we're praying always, and we're going to continue instantly in prayer at all times. Every time we turn around, sisters and brothers, we're praying. Let's go to Psalm, the 32nd chapter. Psalm 32. Psalm 32. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Psalm 32. I'm going to slow it down just a second here. Psalm 32 and verse 5. 32 and 5, brothers, go ahead. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, salute. And so confessing your transgressions unto the Lord, we do that every night if we're in the game. We're looking back at our day. We're confessing our transgressions every night. So we do that in what? In prayer and meditation. So it's prayer. Go ahead, brother. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. And we're doing it in a time when he mayest be found. Because we're walking according to his righteousness. We're doing the best we can to mimic him and to walk according to his word. He's got that hedge about us. So now when we're pleasing in his sight, he can be found. And at a point in time when you're not going to be able to find the uncut word of God is right around the corner. Go ahead, brother. Surely in the floods of great waters, they <coughs> shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way in which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Go ahead, brother. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest thou come near unto me. He's already warned us about not being like the horse, not leaning to your own understanding, not doing it according to your own emotions. Yes, sir. Not doing it according to other anything other than the word of God. Go ahead, brother. Ten. Many sorrows shall be the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Many sorrows to the wicked, but those that are walking right and throwing themselves in prayer as they're seeking God in his righteousness. Yes, sir. Those that trust in him, mercy will come past you about. Even when everything around you is falling apart. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. Yes, sir. Let's go to Psalm the 55th chapter. Psalm 55. Go ahead a few pages. 
Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Praying always. Let's see how always we should be praying. 55 and 16, brother, go ahead. As for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. And that's just like all of us. We shall call upon God and the Lord shall save us. Go ahead, brother. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Evening, morning, and noon praying unto the Lord. Praying always like the new covenant says. New covenant, old covenant, one and the same with a change of ordinances. But for another time, let's go to 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter. 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse 15. 5 and verse 15, brother, go ahead. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but, either, for, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So we're going to be walking according to the word of God. We're going to be doing the best we can to be obedient to his voice. Go ahead, brother. Rejoice evermore. And we're going to rejoice evermore while we're doing it. Go ahead. Pray without ceasing. Pray and always with all prayer and supplications for the saints. Go ahead. In everything, giving thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. That's the will of God for us. It's our whole duty. He fear God and keep his commandments. Yes. Go ahead, brother. Quench not the spirit. Uh -huh. Despise not prophesying. We're not going to quench the spirit and despise prophesying. We're going to listen to what people got to say when they're using the word of God. Go yes. ahead. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And we're going to prove the teachings and we're going to hold on to what is good in the teachings. Go ahead. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And if anything appears to be evil in the teachings, we're not going to use it as our practice. Go ahead. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we're preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Sir. And then we get that reward, that first resurrection. Yes, Let's continue. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. 1 Kings 8. 1 Kings 8. Let's look at the culmination of what we're going to deal with with the first aspect of seeking God, prayer. 1 Kings 8, brother. And let's pick it up at verse 38. 8 and 38. Go ahead. What prayer and supplication so ever be made by any man or by all the people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands towards this house. Now this is deep. You can go into the first Kings, the 8th chapter and the ninth chapter and all this and read this on your own and you can find links from there. Solomon prayed to the Lord about anyone that prays to the temple. Even prayed about Israel one day when they get scattered. If they pray toward the temple, would the Lord hear their prayer? And the Lord said he would. Go ahead, brother. Verse 39. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men. And the Lord answered Solomon's prayer, and the only reason we're going here is to show you the prayer. The Lord answered this prayer and said he would have his eyes continually over the temple, so that if anybody prayed toward that temple, even the strangers, yes. Solomon, wisest man that ever lived, knew it wasn't just for Israel, that it was for all men. Yes, sir. And the Lord said that he would. So the last part of prayer is praying toward the temple. And the quickest way to the temple from America is due east. We're not praying toward the sun. We're not praying toward the moon rise or any of that. We're praying toward the temple in Jerusalem, and it's a sure way to have your prayers heard if you're walking, pleasing in God's eyes. Let's go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. This wind won't let me get there. Isaiah 34. And brother, one verse, verse 16. 34 and 16. Go ahead. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. So what we're doing now, sisters and brothers, is we're praying always. We're knee deep in prayer. Father, show me the truth. 
Show me the truth, Lord, in Jesus' name. Show me how to serve you, Lord. I want to know. And you're reading this book. You're praying always, and now you're reading the book. You're praying to God to show you the truth, and then you're going in, you're starting Genesis, the first chapter, and you go right through the Revelation. And you do that every day. You read a couple chapters every day. As you're praying for God to show you the truth, you're seeking Him out of His Word. Amen. Let's go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry, finish 16, go ahead. None shall want her mate, for my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit has gathered them. And we'll deal with that second part of that scripture at another time. Let's go to 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John, the fourth chapter. What we were looking for was seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. You throw yourself in prayer and then you prove the way God would have you walk in the Scriptures. 1 John 4 and 1 verse, brother, verse 1. Go ahead. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Uh -huh. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So we got to try these spirits. And the spirit is what you're hearing. When you're proving all things, standing fast to that which is good, and you're not despising the prophesies, you're hearing the teachings... But you can't believe all the teachings because all the teachings are from God. Amen. The ones that are in the book will back up. So you got to try that spirit or that teaching. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter, and see how we do that. Acts, the 17th chapter. Yes, sir. Acts 17. Yes, sir. Acts 17. And brother, one verse, verse 11. 17 and verse 11. Hold on a minute. Acts 17 and verse 11. Go ahead, brother. These were more noble than those of Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So the brothers and sisters in Berea, they were listening to the prophesying. They weren't despising it. They were seeing if it was so, so they could cleave on to what was good and abstain from evil. And the way they proved whether or not what they were hearing, the way they proved that spirit, was they went into the Bible to see if what they were hearing could be backed up by the Scripture, sisters and brothers. Sir. So that's the second part of seeking God. You throw yourself in continual prayer, and then you start reading this book. And the Lord will put you in front of somebody that's got understanding. You just keep seeking Yes. He might not pick you up immediately. You might be in a false prophet church for years before he puts you in front of somebody. But you keep seeking. You don't stop proving the book. You don't stop proving it. When they bring you something and you go in the book and you can see it's folly, you get away from it. And I guarantee you the Lord will bring you to his truth. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Jeremiah 10. The Lord told us not to serve him according to the traditions of this world. Let's see why. Jeremiah 10 and verse 2, brother. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. And that's talking about heathens the other nations, not like Sanford's son used to say, you heathen, Fred. <laughs> yeah. God, that's not a derogatory term. It means other nations. Yes. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> for the customs of the people are vain. Uh -huh. One cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So he's telling you, don't learn the ways of the other nations because the customs of the people are vain. And then he's going to go ahead and describe the modern day Christmas, but that's for another time. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. So we're praying always. With everything we got, we're seeking the Lord by praying always. And then we're reading his word. We're knee deep in this book. We're always in the book. And the only thing that is our authority is the scripture. That's right. We're using Bible helps to help us understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We're using Bible helps to help us find certain places in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We're not relying on Bible helps. We're not relying on other languages. 
We're relying on the scripture, the uncut word of God, not adding to or taking away from like he commanded. Yes. And we're praying always, sisters and brothers, 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 24. Brother, go ahead. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So we're running a race, Paul is telling the Corinthians. But it's not like those that run a race where one wins. We're running to obtain a prize, but there's not one winner. We're all running the same race, and we're all running for the same prize. And there's a prize for each and every one of us. Go ahead, brother. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they that do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. And the one that striveth, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. They do it to obtain a corruptible crown when they're running that race, but we're doing it to obtain an incorruptible crown. So he's given us the physical to show us the spiritual, sisters and brothers. Go ahead, brother. 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. So he's keeping himself in the mastery of his temperance while he's doing this. He's not just running all crazy down the block looking goofy. He's got that stride going. His arms are moving. His breathing's down pat. He's running a race, and he's running properly. Go ahead, brother. But I but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So when he's running, he's doing it the right way. He's keeping his stride. He's doing his breathing right. In on the left foot. Out on the left foot with his air. He's got his hands moving properly. He's keeping himself under subjection. And that physical is to show us that we need to keep ourselves under subjection as we're trying to bring others to Christ so we don't become just teachers that are teaching how to do it and not doing it. Because otherwise we're going to find ourselves castaways. We have to be walking this walk as we're teaching others how to do it. Yes, sir. So we have to be mindful of our walk. Let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Paul's going to tell us basically the same thing. He's going to continue with this. Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Brother, go ahead. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Because what is patience? Without patience, we don't have a shot at the word of, at the kingdom of God. We, in patience, we possess our souls, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who is the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we're running this race with patience, and we're looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, as we're running this race, in other words, we're doing it according to the word of God. Go ahead, brother. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. And keep thinking about our example on how he suffered for us when he was here yes. in the flesh. Go ahead. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. So we can use that example so that when we start getting weak and we can throw ourselves boldly in his throne. Amen. Knowing that he was here in the flesh and he had the same temptations we have, but he was perfect. Yes, sir. Let's continue. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, and brother, we're going to read one verse, verse 17, 5 and 17, brother, go ahead. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. See, we keep ourselves in check. We keep that old man dead because we're new in Christ right now. So we're watching the race, we're guarding our hearts, we're leading our hearts, leading and guarding constantly, keeping ourselves in prayer, being obedient to God, searching and making sure that our walk is perfect in the scriptures, pleasing to God. And we're doing it, staying mindful of this walk. We're being sober and vigilant. Yes, sir. Constantly on guard. We don't want to become castaways. Let's go to Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation, the third chapter. And in doing this, this won't happen. 
Revelations 3 and verse 15, brother. 3 and 15, go ahead. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. Yes, sir. The Lord don't like middle of the road. You're either cold or you're hot. And when you're seeking God and you're using the tools that God gave us to seek Him, you are hot, sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. Because all you want is the Word of God. And all you want to do is emulate Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that's not a good thing, being spewed out of the mouth of our Messiah. Go ahead, brother. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing, and knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, uh -huh. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that same, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Yes, sir. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, be zealous, therefore, and repent. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm -hmm. Seek him continually. Yes, sir. With the tools that he gave us, keep yourself hot, leading and guarding your heart. Praying always with all prayer and supplications for the saints. Always in your book, proving your walk. Making sure you're on track. Accountable to each other. Elders serving the younger. The younger, responsible to the elders. The way the church was meant to operate in the gospel of Christ Jesus. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Yes, sir. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I over also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. And when you're hot for God and you stay hot for God and you endure in being hot for God, at the appointed time, you'll be an overcomer and you're going to be granted to sit in the throne with Christ Jesus yes, sir. in the Father's kingdom. Let's continue. Let's go to Proverbs, the 30th chapter. Proverbs, the 30th chapter. So now we're there. We're serving God. We've got some understanding. We're doing things that are pleasing in His sight. And we're continually praying, continually seeking. We're doing all the things required of us. We're watching our races. We're running it. We're staying sober. We're staying vigilant. We're doing everything we need to do to come into the kingdom of God. We need to stay focused on what we're doing now. And we need to do it with God's word. Proverbs 30 and verse 5, brother, go ahead. Every word of God is pure because every word of God is pure. We're not leaning to anything else. Emotions, doctrines of men, yes, sir. our own understanding... Every word of God is pure, not adding or taking away. Go ahead, brother. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. And that's how you put your trust in Him. By being obedient according to His word. Let's go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And one verse. Verse 6, brother. Go ahead. But without faith it is impossible to please him. Uh -huh. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Staying focused, trusting in him, believing in him. Because when you come to Christ, that's a peace that you've never had in this world before. You know when you're pleasing in God's eyes when you first come to him. And it's not about emotions, because you're not just not making an altar call, coming up, getting on your knees, having somebody throw a little water on you, place their hand on your head. When you come to Christ, you're praying always, you're in the Word, you're seeking Him, you're proving the teachings. You're walking to, according to what you find. You're not just a hearer of the Word, but you're also a doer of it. And the Lord is constantly leading you and guiding you and putting people in your life to guide you to the proper path for salvation. So you're trusting in Him. You're believing in Him. Let's go to Joshua, the 26th, 22nd chapter. Joshua 22. Joshua, the 22nd chapter. Joshua 22. 
And one verse, brother. Verse 5. 22 and 5. Go ahead. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all His ways and to keep His commandments and to cleave unto Him and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Stay focused in God's Word. You're trusting in Him. You're believing in Him and you're living according yes, to His Word. Yes, sir. It's living in you. Like Jesus said, him and the Father and the Father and Him and Him and us and us and Him and us and the Father and the Father and us. It's all according to our obedience. Yes, it's not some spirit that comes that the Father gave to Jesus that He blows in us that, and then some little guys running around inside us making us do righteous stuff. It's His Word and we're living according to it and we're constantly thinking on it and praying about it and teaching others about it. And it, 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 and it just consumes our every bit of our being. That's the seeking of God and His righteousness, and that's the culmination of doing it. 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. Living, believing, trusting, faith. All one and the same, sisters and brothers. Obedience to His Word. 2 Peter 3 and verse 13, brother. Go ahead. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And that's the kingdom of Christ Jesus. That's the, all servants are looking for that. To get away from this evil, wicked world. Mm -hmm. And all the evil wickedness that's going on in this world. And it's not just overseas in Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Hamas and all that. It's in our own neighborhoods. When kids are picking on kids and beating each other up. When people are, are on Black Friday knocking people over to get the best deals. People stealing from each other. Right around the block from where you live. It's a wicked world, sisters and brothers. We're all part of it. And the only thing we can change is the three feet around us. And in doing that, we can make a huge difference in everyone's life around us. Everyone that touches us. That's why we're supposed to be a light walking in the commandments of our God. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And be diligent that you're found pleasing in his sight when he returns. Go ahead. And to count that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom, given unto him has written unto you, uh -huh. as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also in other scriptures unto their own destruction. That's why we're proving everything with the doctrine of God. We're proving all the teachings with the scriptures. So we're not Full. So we're not resting the scriptures to our own destruction. Yes. Go ahead, brother. 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfast. So now that you know these things, continue to prove all the teachings yes. with the word of God. Go ahead, brother. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And that's how you grow in grace. Continually seeking God. Yes, sir. That's how you grow in grace. Let's go to Luke the ninth chapter and then we have one other place. Luke the ninth chapter. Luke 9. Luke 9. Luke 9. And brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 18. 9 and 18, brother. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, and his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Then answered, they answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias, and others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. Uh -huh. He said unto them, But whom say them that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. Yes, sir. And he, straightway, and he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Uh-huh. So now they know. They, the disciples know who he is. 
You are a son of the living God. You are the Christ or the anointed one, the Savior. And he said, well, okay, so you know, but don't tell nobody. Go ahead, brother. Verse 22. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Now he says, I'm going to have to come and suffer for the sins of the world. And he's teaching his disciples. Go ahead, brother. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. See, one day at a time, if any man will come unto me, let him deny himself. We're putting aside our emotions and all our understanding and all these doctrines. We're proving it with God's word. We're coming to him daily and picking up our cross and following him. We're stopping the things that we do that aren't pleasing in his eyes or repenting. And now we're becoming obedient to the gospel of Christ Jesus. His word. And we're doing it daily. We're seeking him daily. Go ahead, brother. Verse 24. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And in doing that, we're losing our worldly life for the sake of Christ Jesus. Because now we're walking in the spiritual walk according to his word. And it's called the spiritual walk because that is the laws that will be set in his kingdom or government when he returns and we get our spiritual bodies. Go ahead and continue, brother. 25. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Yes, sir. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and, the ho and of the holy angels. So whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his own glory. So it's the new man, when you put the old man down and you're not ashamed of Christ Jesus and you're walking according to his word, it's the new man that testifies to faith, sisters and brothers, because it's the new man that shows your belief. Last place, 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. 2 Peter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. We're going to keep striving for perfection once we start seeking God and He starts revealing to us because it's in the striving for perfection that we're seeking Him continually. And we're seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. Brother, go ahead. According as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. Yes, sir. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. How did we do that? By seeking God in His righteousness. Seeking first the kingdom of God. That's how we escape the world and all the lust of the world. Go ahead, brother. Five. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So now we've got a couple of definitions I'm going to read as Brother Mike's reading. The first one is definition of virtue. Moral goodness, the practice of moral duties and the abstaining from vice or conformity of life and conversation to the moral law. Go ahead, brother. And to virtue, knowledge. Uh -huh. And to knowledge, temperance. Here's temperance. Moderation. That's temperance. Go ahead, brother. And to temperance, patience. Patience. A calm temper which bears evils without murmuring or discontent. Go ahead, brother. And to patience, godliness. Uh-huh. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Yes, sir. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Yes, sir. For if these things be in you and be abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. So now you know how you're supposed to walk. If you've forgotten that and you start showing fruits that you're walking differently than the gospel of Christ Jesus, you've forgotten that you were purged of your old sins once you've come to Christ. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, but brother, instead of that, rather do this. Go ahead. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure 
For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. So you just continue in the Word of God and give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Diligent. Study and application to business. Concert in effort or exertion to accomplish what is undertaken. Assiduous, attentive, industrious, not idle or negligent. Apply to persons. Be diligent in your walk. And then you should never fail. Amen, brother. Never fail. Yes. Sisters and brothers, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So, as always, we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word, and we hope you got something from these scriptures.